information. And then we want to duplicate this a few times. So if we duplicate again, name this left wall, and then we'll want to rotate it. So. So it's like that. And then we just drag it to the left. It's probably worth just bringing it down so it actually fills up a lot better. So if we duplicate again using Control plus D, and actually hitting Enter on here, we'll call this right wall. And then finally, we'll have a new one. Um, sorry, we'll have a new one which will duplicate from the folder. I'm going to turn that back on, and we'll call um, this one roof. So, if we just toggle it so we can see it, if we just drag this up, you can now see that we have basically a 3D room. It's worth just extending your floor texture out a bit, since we want it to fill a bit more space. And other than that, everything else should be solid. So if we just lock those layers, since we're happy with them, um, we can now bring it in some lights to give it a bit of depth. So if we just bring in one light, and we'll call this left light, we'll be using a butterfly setup so that the boxes that we import them will cast double shadows. So we can just bring that across, have one light like that. Uh, if we actually just bring it back a bit, bear with me. a bit more height. So if we duplicate that light again, we'll just bring one across to the other side. It's just a bit of tweaking with all of these. So you'll see what we double that room now. Basically making a cross shape in the room and we'll call this one uh, no, I've got the wrong way around. Let's name this one right light. So it's like so. So basically we can see that if we go to uh, single line and just press the title key, we got ourselves a nice 3D room. So at this point we want to bring in the 3D box that we have animated. So we just drag and drop it in, bring it to the highest layer. And as you can tell at this point it's not really affected by anything. So we just resize it a bit so it suits the room a bit better. We'll bring it down to about that size. And if we just play, you'll see it's not really doing anything. It's not interacting with the room, it's not casting shadows. So we want to toggle on the 3D layer. And the second we toggle it on, it's now affected by the 3D lights within the room. So as we drag it in and out of the shadow, you can see that the lights are affecting it. But of course it's not casting shadows. So to make it cast shadows, if you just press the drop down, go to material options, we can just turn on shadows, and now you'll see it's creating some quite nice shadows that affect the whole room in different ways. Um, if we go back to 2D horizon, we'll just push this one back into the room and we'll duplicate it using Control D a few times and we'll bring them into different places in the room. So we'll make a few copies of it and we'll have it in different places. Um, it's also worth rotating them just to give them a little bit of a different feel if you're doing just this effect, like my original one. So if we just rotate them a few times. And the last one. So I'm just bring it to like that. You see we've now got some quite simple shapes. So if we just do a very quick run preview on third quality since it's only gonna be four seconds. Since that's all we animated. So I'll just bring that down. Let's just do a quick run preview. You can see that the shadows are interacting with each other and it's basically doing what the um, we set out to do. And that's how you make a 3D object import from Maya into After Effects. The only thing to worth noting about uh, these objects, they're not actually uh, true 3D. They're actually on t 2D planes. That's just how After Effects deals with it. And we got around that problem by using a 3D layer from Photoshop. As I'll try and explain now, if we bring in a camera, and we'll just call this one um, render cam. So we've now brought a camera into this scene. If we just quickly bring it further into the room, so if we bring it to this point let's say, and we turn it 
turn it to the point of uh, field is just sideways. You can see that they're actually 2D shapes. They're not actually three-dimensional. Although they do kind of look 3D when viewed from certain points due to the way that they're dealt with. So you can basically do um, different things with the camera in order to make it a bit more of a feel of how it actually being 3D. What I personally like to do is just animate, set your key points. And I'd love just to throw a quick animation. So if we start here, have it looking at this section of the room. If I can grab the actual key points again. And then let's say by the fourth second, we have everything moved across. So if we just drag it in and down. And if we just mess with the Bezier and curves a bit by click, yeah, by clicking the little uh, boxes to the side. Also, if we just do it from the front, by uh, second four, we'll just make it so it's gone up a bit. And we'll just grab the Bezier curves again. If we just do a very quick RAM preview now, you'll see that by doing that little touch, it makes the uh, scene feel a lot more kind of 3D in that you're actually dealing with space. You can animate the boxes within the scene to move around from this window, but if you want to fix rotations, you have to do it from within the 3D box layer itself. So you can actually replicate quite a good 3D workroom, but you're obviously only using 2D objects. And that is in essence how you get the effect I got before. So once this is played out once, as you see, it looks 3D, but it is actually just mock 3D, so it's 2.5D. I hope that's actually taught you something and you've seen how you can get 3D objects from Maya into After Effects and also to see how the lighting from After Effects can deal with these objects. I hope that was useful and uh, thanks for watching.